Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound with you. Thank you for joining me for another one of my spirit review videos. Uh, before we get started, I want to thank each and every one of my subscribers out there. Uh, this past week we had a milestone, we made it to 1,000. It's good, good, good for me to know that there are that many of you who care about, you know, when I'm releasing videos, want to know what I think on certain spirits, and are just like-minded individuals and loving the spirit industry. So, thank you again. Uh, getting to the video that we're going to be shooting today, it's actually going to be part one of two when I'm covering a trip that the wife and I recently took to Kentucky. We set out with the goal of seeing the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, and in the process of trying to, you know, figure out how I'm going to do all this, I wanted to include their brand new craft tour. I say brand new because it just started like in October of 2012 is when they first released this tour. And if you're unfamiliar with either, uh, the Kentucky Bourbon Trail is a tour that you can do of seven of their big distilleries around Kentucky. And when you go to each distillery, they stamp your little passport. When you're done, you can either turn it in in Bardstown or you can mail it off, which I did, and wait on your t-shirts, which are in the mail. Uh, but that's a great thing. Just a little token of their gratitude. The tours are fantastic, usually relatively inexpensive. And um, most tours on the big guy tours last about an hour. Now, the craft tour with the micro distilleries, seven small ones located in and around Kentucky, a little further spread out, uh, but it's a great way to see the, the world of spirits. Whether you're a vodka drinker, some of them make vodka, uh, or you're a whiskey lover, some of them make a few whiskeys. Hey, even this guy makes a ton of stuff, of course it is great. Uh, but, great way to see it because it's mostly in one room. You know, you walk in, there's the fermenting mash, you can taste it. There's the still, there's the barrels, and there's the bottling. And who's walking you through? The distiller. It's a great, great way to see how stuff is made and to learn, okay? Um, let's see. Talking more about it, the thing that you need to know is that some of them are on limited schedules. Of course, they're at Bowling Green, only open on Friday and Saturdays. The other thing you need to know is you're going to be doing some driving. The wife and I did 2,800 miles on this trip because places like Old Pogue are located an hour and 45 minutes northeast of Lexington. And Lexington is usually the furthest west you'll have to go on the Bourbon Trail. But, hey, well worth it. There's a ton of history in some of these, and uh, it's just a really good thing. So, getting started, talking about the distilleries. Silver Trail Distillery. Um, the, the distiller there is named Spencer Ballantyne. Comes from a lineage of moonshiners. His dad was a moonshiner. And the area where he grew up was known as Between the Rivers. It used to be two rivers, now they're two lakes. Now it's known as Land Between the Lakes, hence LBL. He pays homage to both right there. He's using an 80-year-old family recipe. They're using what they call wagon box stills. It's these square-looking stills. You know, you know, it's incredible how they were created and how they're made, but they're actually making really good moonshine. So the one thing you need to know about them is that they're in a dry county, so when you go visit them, you're not able to taste there. Drive five minutes, cross the lake, cross the bridge. There's... Uh, liquor store, pick up a bottle, okay. Next, MBR, MB Roland Distillery. Uh, it's a guy named Paul and his wife named Mary Beth. Uh, Mary Beth's maiden name was Roland. He used MB Roland, Mary Beth Roland, as the distillery name. We got to meet her. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to meet Paul, but she was a wonderful woman. Uh, answered each and every one of our questions. Very, very friendly. Uh, they actually do parties on Saturdays where they have some live music. Just a great way to spend a, an evening and an after a, a weekend evening there at Amby Rolling. Uh, let's see, they're actually doing a few bottlings. Uh, they're doing this tr uh, Kentucky True Shine. They're doing a couple of Sugar Shines. And they're doing some uh, flavored shines like raspberry, strawberry, blueberry flavored shines. They're doing a mint julep, which is incredible. Great stuff. Uh, let's see, it's located on an old... Amish dairy farm, so it's very picturesque with the two grain silos in the barn. Uh, okay. Barrel House Distillery. They're doing a vodka, they're doing a rum, they're actually working on a bourbon, and they're doing this Devil John's Number no. 9 Moonshine. Great place uh, in Bardstown, and they're doing uh, some really good moonshine. As you can see, I picked up a bottle. Limestone Branch. This is a very new distillery. Uh, the distiller there was named Steve Beam. Got to meet him, he signed my little bottle there. And they're doing one barrel batches in their still. Very small operation. This is called TJ Pottinger's. Uh, it's a, actually, it's a half moonshine, half sugar shine, so corn and sugar. 
the thing that some people call it a corn whiskey, but in order to be corn whiskey, it needs to be 80% corn. This is only 50, and corn whiskey has to be aged in uncharred barrels, and this is not, so it's, it's kind of a moonshine. All right. And from there, uh, Corsair, they're doing a ton of things. I brought out the Rhymageddon. They're actually doing a triple smoke, who's win been winning a ton of awards, uh, but the Rhymageddon is what we're going to be tasting here. They actually do flavored vodkas as well. Um, it's a very small still, 50 gallon still, and yet they're doing all these wonderful products. And these are award winning products, so great, great company, uh, great stuff. Old Pogue, like I mentioned, out of the way, worth the trip. Not only is it very picturesque there, beautiful, beautiful land. You can oversee the river from both sides. Um, the distiller's house, this has got some history behind it, okay? Old Pogue Distillery was one of the very first distilleries there in Maysville and it was located right on the river so when people there in Kentucky needed to ship bourbon down or actually it was whiskey at the time down stream to New Orleans where it was being consumed they shipped from Mayville from the Old Pogue distillery there and uh, I mean the like I said the distillers house is there he uh, Paul Pogue was one of the distillers he walked me in got we got to see the home um, it's just you can see where the oldest story used to be right across the train tracks right on the river it's no longer there but ton of history to know that bourbon how it got its name was from old bourbon county which used to be big encompassed a bunch of counties and the other got broke down to where now it's little bourbon county but back in the day it was known as old everything from there was known as old bourbon whiskey they put it on those barges and ships sent it downstream old bourbon they started people calling for bourbon and it came from Maysville. Amazing. Uh, Willet. Willet. Brand new distillery. Beautiful location. Uh, you, it is located on the old Willet farm. Uh, but the Willet bourbon that we've come to know and love, like Noah's Mill, Rowan's Creek, and so on, Bargetown, Johnny Drum, uh, they were being made by KBD. Okay. Now, Willet is now back on the farmland. They built a brand new place. And they are now making all those together there at that distillery. So eventually Noah's Mill and all those that I just mentioned will be coming from their still that is there. Uh, but it's not quite there yet. If you go there now you're getting KBD stuff. Uh, but hey, they're working together. It's a good thing. So let's get to the tasting, nosing. Uh, the LBLs, most wanted. Very sweet corn. Think candy corn on the nose. I'm not going to get into too much on the nose on these moonshines. It's really, I can tell you some things, but I'm not going to start throwing out a bunch of crazy uh, stuff on them. No alcohol on the nose. On the taste, super smooth. This is 100 proof. Just a lot of corn. A little bit of ethanol coming on towards the finish. But as far as how smooth it goes down, it's very, very soft. Full flavor, corn, sweet. Hint of yeast. And like I said, a little bit of that ethanol. Not bad. Very, very nice. Good stuff. Thing I like about it, quart size. Can't beat that. Alright, MBR. MB Roland. Kentucky True Shine. This is white corn and sugar. 50 50. Mm. A little silkier on the palate. Way more corn on the on the flavor. I didn't notice it for you, my bad. This one isn't as like sweet on the nose as the previous one. You definitely get the corn, but not much more. It's not not very sweet on the palate, like I mentioned. Big corn. It is fairly sweet on the palate. Not really getting any ethanol or any alcohol on the finish. Pretty full flavored. Really, really good shine they're doing there. It's good sipping shine. Very nice. All right. Here we are. Barrel House doing the Devil John's number nine moonshine. That's why I picked up a bottle of that one. It's soft. It's smooth. It's very light in flavor. It's not, it's not as heavy on the corn as this one or this one. 
not as sweet either. It's just a hint of corn, a little bit of sweetness, touch of yeast, but it's very soft, and very kind of, I'm not going to call it elegant, but it's, it's soft for moonshine, okay? Uh, it's only 90 proof, so maybe that's a little bit of the reason it feels softer. Uh, but they are making a vodka, so it does tend to have a little more of that feel to it. Very clean. On the finish, very clean. Alright. TJ Pottinger, the 90 proof. Wow. Wow. Big corn. Big a yeast note, like a bread almost, like a baking bread. Not very sweet on the nose. That's about what it tastes like. Full flavored. A lot of corn. But it gets softened because they're using a little bit of sugar in there as well. It kind of gets a little bit sweet. No ethanol. Uh, just a lot of flavor. A lot of that corn. A lot of that yeast. That is perhaps the fullest flavor of the, the shines that I have here. So if you want clean, you know, you might want to go this route. If you want flavor, you might want to go this route. If you want perfectly balanced, you might want to go either one of these routes, okay? All right. Corsair, Rhymageddon. They're using a, a, a malted barley, a malted rye, I'm sorry, and a chocolate rye. And the only difference is chocolate rye is when they when they fire it up and they're, they're stopping the germination by heat, they actually leave it a little bit longer so it starts getting a little toasted and that imparts flavors of, of like, a, like a roasted coffee, something like that, a little chocolate flavor. So let's get to the nose. Wow, wonderful nose. It reminds me of uh, cola. So you're thinking vanilla, caramel. Maybe a little allspice in there, uh, but it's very subtle. Just think a good Coca-Cola. It's crazy how it smells like that on the nose to me. Okay, on the flavor. Wow. It enters like that. It enters immediately like a, like a cola. I mean, granted, it's whiskey, but it has that, that caramel that vanilla feel right up front and then right as soon as you're thinking wow this is lovely and soft then in comes this roasted uh, almost like a chocolate covered coffee bean that's what it is right there mid palate it just transforms halfway through mm, that is fantastically complex and wonderful whiskey coming out of Corsair I know it sounds crazy for me to say cola to coffee bean, but chocolate covered coffee bean, but that's what that is. All right, uh, the Five Fathers, pure malt rye, coming from Old Pogue. He's honoring the Five Fathers and the Pogue family that have been distillers coming down the line, uh, using again pure malted rye on the nose. It is that malted grain, that malted rye on the nose. A little bit of plum. Maybe like a hint of raisin. A little bit of honey. All right, let's see what it tastes like. Oh, by the way, 110 proof. Very small bottles, very strong. That's a great whiskey. If you're going to be honoring your five generations of past fathers, that's a great honor. It's not a bourbon. It doesn't. Don't even try to think that's going to remind you of a bourbon. Not even really like a rye whiskey. Think, think a rye whiskey with a little cognac is what it reminds me of. It's 
cinnamon. It's a little bit of the, the rye, that, that malted rye, that feel, that malt. A little sweet, but then there's that plum coming through, like a very ripe plum. And then... Mm, a little raisin aspect to it, reminding me of cognac. And then at the very finish, it starts becoming a little bit of tobacco leaf. Very fresh tobacco leaf. Not dried out. Fresh, sweet tobacco leaf. That is amazing whiskey. Unfortunately, it's only available there at the distillery right now, but make the trip. It's worth it. Not only for the history and the, and the views, but that whiskey is wonderful. All right, their bourbon, Old Pogue. Very light on the nose, sweet caramel, vanilla, a little strawberry raspberry maybe. And I'd say about a mild to medium amount of oak on the nose. On the taste, breathing out that oak. It's a medium amount of oak. Very, very well balanced when it comes to the amount of uh, the oak, the vanilla, the caramel, the fruits. Again, I'm almost getting that similar, that fresh, uh, fresh leaf tobacco on the finish on this one. Hmm. It's very, very well-rounded bourbon. It's a little spicy, a little bit of cinnamon. hint of honey on that flavor, on the finish. But when I think bourbon, just a well-rounded everyday dram, sorry, <laughs> I think this one might be perfect. Um, just very well balanced. Alright, will it Single barrel pot still reserved. This one's 94 proof. Much lighter on the nose as far as the oak. I get more of a sweet and a berry uh, coming through. Almost a, a, a creme brulee on this one. It's a little lighter, a little more um, fresh as far as the fruit and the vanilla. All right, getting to the taste. more cinnamon, more of a rye feel to it. A little livelier, a little spicier up front. But I like the way it, it gets really spicy cinnamon up front, but then it, just when you think it's going to keep burning right through your palate, drops off, gets really smooth. Let's the vanilla and the uh, oak kind of linger. Yeah, cinnamon right up front. But like I said, it works out perfectly the way it just kind of flares, softens, and rolls with the vanilla and oat. And the berries are laying through throughout the, they're underneath, like an undertone of like a raspberry. Yeah, raspberry, maybe a little bit of strawberry. And that's it. So, craft tour, a must do for everyone out there. I highly recommend it. They're doing a wonderful job there in Kentucky with both tours. And I hope you enjoyed the video. So thank you for joining me. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.